<laughs> I fell in love with the ocean when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. I got knocked over by a wave when I was about three years old. Mm -hmm. My mother at first was concerned and she almost grabbed me and took me out of the ocean, but as I came sputtering back to the surface, <laughs> I had this big smile on my face. <laughs> at first I was scared, but then when I realized that it was really exhilarating, I, I haven't looked back. <laughs> the, but it was not just the physical pleasure of being in the water, it was the joy of finding life, mm -hmm. other forms of life infinite diversity. It is yeah. just, for me, what has held my attention mm -hmm. all these years. Children are natural explorers. Mm -hmm. They're naturally inquisitive. They ask who, what, why, where, how, they're, and they're uninhibited. They're full of wonder. Mm -hmm. Every scientist that I know who's any good at all is like a child. Mm -hmm. They ask questions. They're uninhibited mm -hmm. in, ter in terms of asking and thinking outside the constraints of, of normal ways of thinking, I suppose. Mm -hmm. And they have that sense of wonder that mm -hmm. life is a miracle. Mm -hmm. And being alive itself, being aware is a miracle. Mm -hmm. Being a human being is such a trip. Well, mm -hmm. I have stopped killing wildlife to eat. Mm -hmm. And if everyone would just give wildlife a break for a while, it doesn't mean you have to stop eating fish forever. But you should always eat it with respect. Never, ever take a bite of any other creature without being mindful of the investment and what it takes to keep you alive. That's true with plants, too. But it's especially true with big carnivores that have this great tale of investment in them and thousands of other creatures to make a tuna fish. <laughs> so when we eat a tuna fish, dish of whatever sort, a casserole or a sandwich or a sushi or sashimi, think of the, the mass of wildlife that has gone into making one tuna. For a pound of tuna, it's on the order of a hundred thousand pounds of plants that have been consumed through these food chains for every pound of tuna. For a pound of chicken, it's only two pounds of plants, or a pound of catfish or tilapia or carp, these lower mm -hmm. the, for, you know, grazers that mm -hmm. live and can mm. go to a market in a year. So we have a chance. The good news, this is the best chance we'll ever have. Never before did we know, never again will we have such a good opportunity mm -hmm. to act on what remains of the natural world, protect it, come up with technology solutions to help us. But first and foremost, we have to protect the natural world and not continue consuming it, eroding it, degrading it, dismembering it. Our lives depend on it. The good news is if you bring about protection, recovery may be possible. Mm -hmm. If you don't bring about protection and we continue what we're doing, there won't be any tuna. Mm -hmm. There won't be any swordfish. There won't mm -hmm. be any options. We still have choices now. Mm -hmm. We can choose to cut way back or even eliminate tuna from your diet mm -hmm. to give the future a break, mm -hmm. to give even your future a break mm -hmm. because tuna in 10 years, psh, there won't be any mm. if we continue doing what we're now doing.